In this video, we are discussing the classification of the class Coniferoxida. Class Coniferoxida is also divided into four orders. The first order is Cordyctates. Then the second order Coniferase. Third one, taxes. And the final order is jingoids. Then we will discuss what are the features of these different orders. First, we will see the characters of the order Cordyctales. The members of the order Cordyctales are extinct. That means there is no living members in the order Cordyctales. Okay. Then these extinct members, they are originated in the Devonian period, flourished well in the Carboniferous period and vanished in the Triassic period. Okay. Then what is the habit of the trees in Cordyctales? The trees was or the members was tall trees with flat and strong shaped leaves. What do you mean by this strong shape? Tongue like. Okay. So the members of Cordyctales were tall trees and their leaves were flat and strong shaped. Okay. Then comes the nature of the leaves. Again, okay. the leaves possess parallel venation and spirally arranged. Okay. Then they have cones. But the cones were unisexual. Okay. These are the characters of the order Cordyctales. There, there is no living members originated in the Devonian period, flourished in Carboniferous, then vanished in the Triassic. They are tall trees with straw shaped leaves. Leaves possess parallel venation and it is spirally arranged. The unisexual cones are also present in Cordyctales. Then we are moving to the second order that is Coniferase. Coniferase are the largest order of gymnosperms. In Coniferase, there are about 52 genera and 570 species. 52 living genera and 570 species are there in the order gymnosperm. In the order Coniferase. Then it is originated in the Carboniferous period and it is not yet vanished, but it constitutes 3 by 4 of the living gymnosperms. Okay. Then the habit of the members, there are large trees and shrubs in this order. And we know the tallest tree in the world, Sequoia semper virus, it is comes under this order Coniferous. Okay, so there are large trees and shrubs. And in large trees or in the members, the, uh, the stem is woody and it shows two types of branches. Dwarf branches as well as the long branches. Long and dwarf branches are present in corn fairies. Okay. Like in the case of stem, leaves are also diverse. Two types of leaves are also present. The two types of leaves are foliage leaves and scale leaves. The green colored foliage leaves for photosynthesis and brown colored scale leaves for protection. Okay. Then they possess a taproot system with mycorrhizae that we already discussed in the introduction section. Without mycorrhizae, the coniferal members will not exist, exist because for water absorption, instead of root hair, this mycorrhizal association or fungal hyphae is performing the uh, role of uh, providing the surface area for water absorption. Okay, so they possess a taproot system with mycorrhizal association. Then, another very, very important point is. The wood of coniferates possess resin canals. Number of resin canals are present in the wood of coniferates. Okay. 
then they possess beautiful and compactly packed cones and their cones are unisexual that means both male and female cones are present okay these are the characteristic features of the order coniferae it is the largest order originated in the carboniferous period and today 3 by 4 of the living gymnosperms are coniferae then they are there are large trees and shrubs the more the very common sequoia comes under this order then they possess two types of branches and two types of leaves and the tap root system they possess a tap root system with mycorrhizal association then wood possess resin canals and both perfect male and female cones are present in the order coniferae okay then we are moving to the third order that is taxil so order taxil the members are evergreen small trees or shrubs with extensive branching okay so taxils includes living members and the members are either small trees or shrubs and shows extensive branching then comes leaves the leaves are solitary flat and deciduous what do you mean by solitary they are the simple leaves then it is flat in appearance and the arrangement is deciduous deciduous means the leaves are arranged in two vertical rows like this suppose this is a stem portion from which the flat leaves are appearing like this and it is arranging in two vertical rows that is why this arrangement is called as deciduous Then comes the female strobilus. Here, the female strobilus is represented by a single ovule, but it is covered with an egg. Okay, so suppose this is a single ovule. This is protected by or this is covered by a structure. That structure is called as egg. So this is egg. so after fertilization what will happen the ovule will uh, transforms into from ovule the seeds are forming during that time this egg forms a forms an attractive covering okay so here instead of a perfect female cone a single ovule is present but it is protected within an egg okay then comes in male strobilus male strobilus is characteristic because it possesses a central axis and to the central axis number of pectic sporangiophores are attached so what is the structure of male strobilus in taxis suppose this is a central axis to the central axis number of pectic sporangiophores so this is a sporangiophore bearing two sporangia each lobe with a single sporangia so this is the arrangement of like this number of peptide sporangiophores are present in taxis so this is a single peptide sporangiophore each sporangiophore possesses two sporangia in each lobe and it is also covered with a overlapping scales overlapping scales are there for the protection this is a structure of male strobilus in taxis okay so taxis composed of living members the plants are evergreen small trees or shrubs and extensive branching is there then the leaves are solitary flat and shows deciduous arrangement female strobilus is represented by a single ovule protected within an egg then the male strobilus possesses a central axis and to the central axis number of peptide sporangiophores are arranged and each peptide sporangiophore possesses two sporangia okay these are the characters of the order taxis and the next order or the last order in class coniferae is ginkgoes 
In the last order, Jingo is there is only one living member that is Jingo Bailoba. The common name of this Jingo Bailoba is Maiden Hair Tree. So there is only there is only one living member in this order. So this plant or this group or this plant is known as the living fossil. Okay, because all others in this order are extinct. Okay. Then comes the characters of the leaves. The leaves are broad, bilobe, broad and bilobe. That is why it is called as jingo biloba. The leaf of the jingo is like this. This is a petiole and the lamina, the lamina is bilobe like this. So that is why it is called as jingo biloba. Then the a uh, typical type of the uh, characteristic type of variation present in Jingo Bailoba is dichotomous. That means, suppose this is a way towards the tip or towards the ending of the lamina, it is formed like this. This is a characteristic type of variation present in Jingo Bailoba. So, the leaves of Jingo Bailoba are broad, bilobe and shows dichotomous variation. Then they possess both male and female cones. Okay. So in the order jingoids, there is only one living member. That one living member is jingo biloba. So there is only one living member. So it is called as living fossil. Living fossil of this order. Okay. Then the leaves are characteristic. It is bilobe broad and shows dichotomous variation and both male as well as female cones are present in jingoids. Okay. So we have discussed the classification of class Cycloxida and Polyphyloxida. Both of them possess four different orders. Then the final class is Nitoxida. Nitoxida possess a single order that is Nitase. So, we already learned the characters of meat tails in the session Nitoxida. They are woody climbers or shrubs and it shows lot of angiosperm characters like presence of xylem vessels, reticulate venation, presence of two cotyledons in the embryo. That is why the numbers in meat tails are acting as a connecting link between gymnosperms and angiosperms. Okay. This is a classification of gymnosperm given by K.R. Spawn. So, he considered gymnosperm as a division. He classified it into three different classes. Then the classes are divided into orders. The orders are again divided into families. And within the families, the genus and species are coming. Okay, thank you.